In this tutorial video, we will be going over an example model of an application that simulates future investment portfolio returns that are based on historical returns and also historical correlations. We'd like to highlight here several unique model risk features, which are objects, copulas, and fitting. We won't be able to go into too much detail, so if you'd like more information, I would encourage you to look at the model risk help file. In our situation, or for our model, we'll first start with a set of data, which we have loaded in a separate tab. What we have is some historical returns for both equity and bonds. These are normalized returns. The first step is to convert them to log returns. So we convert into log space. So we now have the historical returns in, lo in a log return format. On the model side, what we do first is we generate data objects. We have three different data objects. One is linked to both sets of returns together in a single object, and then we have an object for the equity returns and an object for the bonds. Objects are a unique feature to model risk, and what they do essentially is give us access to all of the data on the other tab simply by referencing a single cell on this particular sheet of the, of the model. Since an investment's correlations are also extremely important and are always extremely important, particularly when looking at several different classes of assets, we want to be able to represent that in our model. To do that, we have fitted another unique feature of model risk is copula fitting. We have fitted a copula object to the data in our data objects, which are referencing the data tab in our model. We can have a look at what this copula looks like or any of these other features by simply clicking the View Function button. This is a graphical representation of the copula, which is recreating the nonlinear correlation pattern that we have in our historical data. Next, we need to fit some distributions to each type of equity or each type of asset, equity and bonds. We've done that here and here. These are what we call those fit objects. Again, a unique feature to model risk. What we have done is we have fitted a distribution to the data for the equity. The best fitting distribution was the HS distribution, which stands for hyperbolic secant. And then we've put it in our spreadsheet also as an object. Again, the point being is we can refer to this fitted distribution simply by referencing this cell. If the distribution fit changes or if any of the data changes, that automatically cascades through the entire model to our fitting. And so we don't need to go back and rechange every time we update our data. We've done the same thing on the bond side. The best fitting function, excuse me, distribution is the error function. You can see a picture of the fit here. Now we have our two fitted distribution objects in our model. We're going to use an asset allocation of 25% equity and 75% bonds. And then we're going to build the actual functioning part of the model. We're going to start here. Our data on the prior sheet goes through October of 2007. We're going to try to forecast out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months into the future on a monthly basis. What we first need to do is take samples for each of the future months from our copula object. And you can see what we use is the VOS simulate function. We use VOS simulate and we reference the copula object here in cell E15. And what we have here is a set of matched values that go between 0 and 1. If we recalculate the sheet, you can see both values change. And because we're referencing the copula fitted to our historical data, these two sets of values for each month follow the same correlation pattern that is in our historical data. Next, we want to generate some log returns for each of our asset classes. So again, we do these in pairs by month. And the way we do this is, again, we use the VOS simulate. In this case, we're taking a sample of the equity distribution that we've previously set up as an object. But we say comma, 
D6. So we then refer to this particular copula that we've set up for this month. That's called a U value. And so essentially what we have is we have a set of log returns here, which are samples from our two fitted distributions. However, those two samples are correlated based on the copula, which is also fitted to our data. We do that for all of the nine months in our forecast. So we get log returns for each of those months every time we recalculate. Since we're working in log space and we really want to come back, we want to come out of log space to look at our actual returns, what we do is we find the cumulative return for each of the type of distributions by, by converting back out of log space. And then we can apply the weightings that we've set up earlier for our portfolio, 25% equity, 75% bonds. And what we have here in this series of data are the correlated future forecasted returns based on our historical data and our historical correlations. That's also shown in this graphically in this plot here, plot over time. If we recalculate multiple times, we can see that for every calculation, because this is a stochastic model, we get a different set of returns. So what we'll do is go ahead and run a simulation, which is essentially running 1,000 what-if scenarios of our model and of possible future returns for our portfolio. When we get done with that, we'll be able to have a look at on a probabilistic or a stochastic basis, the kinds of returns we might expect from this particular portfolio. What we see first is a histogram. This is a histogram based on the total returns for the nine months. What you can see is we uh, can start thinking rather in terms of a specific forecast for this portfolio, we can start thinking of an 80 percent confidence interval. That we have an 80 percent confidence interval, we're going to be somewhere between 0.94 and 1.06. What, what we can also think about doing is looking at these from a probabilistic perspective over time. So here we have what's called a trend chart, which shows each month going forward in the future, and the probability of a return for e a cumulative return through each of those months. So for instance, through month the third month, we can say that there's a 99% probability of being within the dark blue area, a 50% probability of being within the light blue area, and then average or expected return is the red line. So let's say we've been doing this for a client or a customer, and we're now interested in conveying this information to them. A very nice, unique feature within Model Risk is this results viewer window. What we can do is go ahead and click the Save button, save this to a file, email it to our client or customer. They can go to the Vose software website, download a very small free application, and then review all of this data in the same format that you're, we're viewing it now. They can manipulate it. They can look at it from different angles. They can look at the actual samples from the simulation as well as statistics and so on. So just to recap, we've shown a very simple model of forecasting a portfolio, but we've used many real-world tools. We've used objects, copulas, fitting. We're, co we're fitting our future returns to our past returns and our future correlations to our past correlations. So this is really a very practical, very real world model. Hope you found it interesting. If you would like more information about model risk or about this model, I'd encourage you to contact Vos Software at these numbers or Vos Consulting for at, at these numbers and request either a trial for model risk or a copy of this example file.